25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Pen Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. When Forrest Gump, the movie, came out. I hadn't seen the movie, but I was on the road a lot back in those days. I was in my car all the time. When, when did that come out? Was that the 80s? When did Forrest I Gump? I think so, yeah. Yeah, a long time ago. And I went to the... Uh, the I was on the road a lot, so I went to the bookstore, and I was looking for audiobooks. And I found um, the audiobook for Forrest Gump. And it was, I think it was six cassettes or something like that. And I thought, oh my mm-hmm. gosh, six cassettes. <laughs> back, back six in cassettes. <laughs> Holy mackerel, this is good. Because I wanted something long because I was on the road a lot back in mm-hmm. those days. And I listened to it and I, I enjoyed it so much. And then I, and, and everybody had said, if you read the book, it, it's so much more enjoyable than the movie. But the movie really was good too. I liked the movie too. But anyway, you know how people will say that quite frequently about books and movies. Um, and it was way longer, you know, than a normal cassette, obviously, six cassettes. But it wasn't the whole, it wasn't the whole book. And if you look closely at the, at the, the description on the cover, it says abridged for, for, mm-hmm. for audiobook. Uh, that is not necessary these days. You do not have to limit things to six cassettes anymore. No. Or whatever the, the limit might have been back in those days. Um, there is, in, in fact, as you know, a CD can hold more information than a cassette. Can you imagine 44 CDs? If wow. you If you want a book as good as Battlefield Earth as an audio book, uh-huh. uh, that's what we're talking about right now. Battlefield Earth, of course, is the L. Ron Hubbard book. Um, and if you've ever read it, then you know what I'm talking about. If you'd like it to be read to you, the audio book is more than just a guy or a gal reading a book. It is acted out. This is like an audio movie, I guess, is the best way to say that. Jim Mars is on the phone. He is an award-winning journalist, a prominent figure in the John F. Kennedy conspiracy press. His book, Crossfire, by the way, The Plot That Killed Kennedy, was a source for the Oliver Stone film, uh, JFK. Uh, he's a New York Times best-selling author, and he's on the phone right now to talk to us about this. T- is it 47 hours long? I think so. 47 yeah. hour long um, audio book. You could, uh, yeah. Th- I love, that's one thing I love about technology. Jim Mars, good morning, sir. How are you? Hey, good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you, Larry and Robin. Uh, and yeah, and by the way, this one, you, you, all those uh, cassette tapes you had, uh, Battlefield Earth in, in its special audio book is 47 and a half hours. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow is right. But, we, but I tell you what, I listen, I, I'll have to admit, I, I have not had time to, to go through the whole thing. Besides that, I read the book years ago when it first came out. Uh-huh. Uh, a, a lot of people don't realize that uh, uh, back before uh, Scientology ever came along, uh, L. Ron Hubbard was already a very popular writer uh, and wrote under a lot of pseudonyms and uh, was also uh, considered one of the uh, top science fiction writers, uh, right up there with Isaac Asimov and uh, uh, Arthur C. Clarke and those guys. Uh, and boy, this is one heck of a story. And uh, back to the audio book, uh, grab this. Uh, there's 67 voice actors uh, portraying a hundred wow. 198 characters, over 150,000 sound effects, and it has a full cinematic musical score that was written especially uh, to accompany the book. So, you know, like you, you said, it was, uh, it's like, I, I call it a movie of the mind, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was your role in it? Did you, are you one of the voices? No, no, I'm not. They had really professional people doing that. I'm just, uh, I'm just a fan of uh, of the book, and uh, that's why they sent me around to try to tell you about it. Uh, <laughs> Where are you? Where are you calling but, from? I'm calling from my home in Texas. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you got that Texas accent going on there. 
Oh, don't tell me, man. Hey, down here uh, where I live, uh, everybody thinks I don't have an accent. Really? <laughs> and, really? <laughs> well, yeah. You ought to hear some of my neighbors, you know, that live a <laughs> piece down the road, you know. <laughs> yeah, piece down the road. Uh, so, so, the, so but, uh, the, how, long, it, how long did it take to make the audio book? It took quite, uh, several months. This is a real labor of love, I'll tell you. It's, and you know what it reminds me of? Because I hate to date myself, but uh, uh, when I was a kid, there was no television, okay? Right, <laughs> and, right, right. And uh, I remember as a kid, I used to lay in bed at night. I think I was supposed to be going to sleep, but I had a radio right next to my Mm -hmm. bed, and I'd turn it real low, and I'd listen to The Shadow and Gangbusters and uh, uh, Gunsmoke, you know, Marshall Dillon and Gunsmoke. He was on the radio before he ever did the TV thing. That that is a great thing to compare it to. Um, The the one thing I like, and, and this is, I can't imagine myself listening to this much audio any place except for in my car I'm, sh- I'm sure some people do I'm sure some people listen in their recliners or whatever but this has got to be one thing where you're in the car and you're driving and you next thing you know you're five hours down the road and you didn't realize you know right <laughs> exactly exactly my now please everybody keep you out on the road but keep <laughs> you, but keep your ear on this if, uh, truck drivers for example or people are making a really long trip or you know even if you have a, a miserable commute every day mm-hmm. uh, it, it would be so perfect because uh, again remembering uh, back when I used to listen when I was a kid and listen to radio you, you you heard you know back then they didn't just read you a story they had people playing the characters and and the voices were changing and there were sound effects right, and if, right. if a gun went off you heard a bam bam you know you knew exactly what was going on <laughs> let me ask but, you can I ask you but something you, I, but, but you pictured it in your mind, in your mind, you you could close your eyes and listen, and and then see it for yourself. And it was a very uh, it, it involved the the listener so much. And I I think maybe we've missed some of that today. I've had some of my books uh, uh, made into audio books, but it's always just one actor just reading the book. You know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you got to have a little bit more money. Can I ask you a question? And I hope this is not insensitive, but I've always wondered something. We we have been fans of the L. Ron Hubbard books for a long time. Uh, we've, we've had many of the audio books. I've had them in my car and everything. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, if you mention L. Ron Hubbard, somebody will m- mention Scientology. And, and if they are turned off by Scientology, then they don't they don't open their eyes to all of the other work that L. Ron Hubbard did, and I th- I sometimes think that's a little bit of a challenge because they're not they're not seeing past something else. Do you know what I mean? Does that ever happen? Do do, do is that is that a challenge for you? Well, no, for, I'm I'm not a Scientologist, okay, and uh, but I have been places, and in fact, I was recently at a at a convention where they had a a whole book of a whole raft of uh, L. Ron Hubbard's books sitting out there, and I did see one or two people walk by and go, "Ooh, L. Ron Hubbard, ooh," and they go turn up their nose and they run away. This this shows me uh, that's a sign of a shallow, uninformed mind. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, and I I don't think be if if you listen. I mean, hey, Edgar. Uh, I mean, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. You know, was a drunk and I think a, <laughs> a drug addict, and ended up dying in an alley somewhere. You know, but but does that mean his literature is not any oh, good? Oh, yeah, and of uh, not. a great, a great, a great. And another example is some of the composers that have written some amazing music that he used in hymnals and in mm-hmm. churches, and some of the some of these guys were were womanizers and and right. And, right? <laughs> Yep. Degenerates, <laughs> degenerates. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not saying L. Ryan Hubbard is one of them. Just <laughs> no, 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 no. I, no, I got you. The idea is you can't, ju- you know, you don't judge right. the book by the author. <laughs> the, the, the one thing I, wa- I wanted you to do, if, and I, it, we've talked about Battlefield Earth before, but you know, I don't think I've ever asked anybody to tell us. I know in 47 and a half hours, it's kind of hard to give a thumbnail sketch or a movie trailer. St- like, like, just tell us what the story is about. What is the story oh, about? The, the story is really great, and it, it's very apropos to to what's happening in the world today. Uh, it seems that the intergalactic bankers, uh, you know, loan money to the intergalactic mining corporations so they could come and strip mine the resources of the earth. Uh, but um, but then they found out that they had a problem with these. 
pesky humans, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so they had to go and hire uh, uh, big, giant, hairy aliens from the planet Cyclos, which I always love because that's just one letter off from Psychos. Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, they, and the Cyclos come down here, and they've been occupying the Earth for a thousand years, and uh, the uh, this takes place in the year 3000, and... Um, uh, they uh, suddenly find themselves uh, confronted by some humans who uh, were just in little small primitive packs, I guess. And uh, that, but they get organized and they start working to try to reclaim the earth. And it's a, it's a, and in in this forty-seven hours, obviously it, that was just the thumbnails overall sketch. That it goes off in so many tangents and talks about politics and religion and banking and I mean it gets into the whole thing. But what's so interesting is this is not like some of the modern movies like Independence Day, where the aliens come and just blow up everything and kill everybody. Uh, they're just here. They're just here trying to fulfill their contract. And uh, uh, and the thing is, if they don't meet, if they don't m make their payments, you know, then uh, then they then the bank takes back the uh, the uh, issue, and and they're going to put the earth up for sale to the highest bidder. <laughs> oh man! Trying to repossess the earth, you know. So it, anyway, it, it it goes off into so many things, touches so many uh, levels that. Uh, it, it's really a fascinating read. And this really does serve as a mirror, like you said, as to what's going on today and throughout history. I mean, Columbus came over, tried to uh, annihilate the... Uh, the uh, uh, Native Americans, and it seems like everybody, every culture does that, and you'd think we would learn to get along by now. You'd think so, and by the way, Columbus didn't try, and he did exterminate them, but I will, in his defense, it wasn't like they came over here and killed everybody. I mean, they did, but not, uh, but not on purpose. It, it was the diseases they brought. Uh, just about, he landed on what was uh, essentially now Cuba, and uh, before long, all the Carib Indians had, been, had died off of the of all kinds of sicknesses, and and so yeah, it, it didn't end up too well. This is what's provoking co uh, conversation today. In fact, uh, L. Ron Hubbard pretty well touched on this this issue uh, back in Battlefield Earth, which is uh, you know Stephen Hawking has now come out and kind of warned, saying maybe maybe we shouldn't be sending all these radio signals and and space probes like the Voyager 1, Voyager 2, which, by the way, are now outside our solar system, you know, and right, uh, right, right. Uh, you know, and maybe we shouldn't be doing that and show and letting everybody know that we're here and where we are because we might not like who shows up. I, I, I know, and not only that, but you know, there, there was a song a few years ago that was uh, called uh, Oh my gosh. Cl uh, Calling Occupants. You remember the song Calling yes. Occupants of Interplanetary Craft? Mm -hmm. And in the, and then the song, the, the words were, we are your friends. Come on, come on. We are your friends. And I'm thinking, no, no, no. If I were talking <laughs> to the aliens, I'd say, you better be careful because we have historically not been friendly to anybody who's different <laughs> than us. That's, right. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly true. Yeah, I, I think it was an old Twilight Zone or something. And they, you may remember that one where uh, they, they land and uh, everybody, they said, we're your friends. And everybody's going, yeah. Hey, you know we got space brothers right, right. Like that. and that, and they find a book that says to serve man and they're going oh great man you know this is great there are space brothers and they're all loading on the ship to go somewhere and somebody comes one of them comes running back out and says go back go back it's a cookbook I, re <laughs> I remember that episode it's I do cookbook. that was spooky real spooky <laughs> to serve man oh my god <laughs> well, hey, gra hey grab this on Voyager 2 they have a big golden disc uh, that if you, I, I guess they assume somebody out in the universe has a record player. I don't, I, I don't know. But if you play the disc, it's actually got a lot of recordings. It's got a drawing of a human man, a human woman, and it's got like a map. It's got, it shows our solar system and it shows where the earth is, and that's what they were kind of talking about. Maybe we shouldn't give them a map to where we are. <laughs> but, but, but also on this golden disc is recordings from around the world, from ancient tribal chants and stuff and to obviously the you know the classics Beethoven and Bach and everything but what got me was uh, also on there is uh 
Chuck Berry playing Johnny B. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering <laughs> what people out in the universe, if they have you to get hold of this and they can translate it and they play it, I mean, are they going to go, boy, these people uh, need to be eradicated? <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or are they going to say, hey, rock and roll. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That's too funny. All right, let me take a little break, Jim, and then we'll be right back. We're talking to Jim Mars. He is, uh, where did you say you are? Oh, you're in Texas somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and we're talking about Battlefield Earth, the audio book, which you can get on CDs, and I think you can download it as audio files also. Uh, but we'll be right back. Or you, or you can get it on a little flash drive. That's the one I like. It's like just a little flash drive, and you plug that in, and, man, you got all. You, you like, got everything at once, yeah. yeah. You got everything. I like yeah. that, too. Hold on. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Thursday, lots of sunshine. The high 77 to 81. Clear to partly cloudy Thursday night, with lows ranging from the upper 40s and low 50s in a few inland spots to the upper 50s along the coast. For Veterans Day, mostly sunny and pleasant, the high 77 to 81. Saturday, partly sunny, high 78 to 82. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. That was the sound of a tree falling. It could be your tree. You're going to have it trimmed, but never got around to calling Pride Tree Service. It could have fallen in a field, and now all you have to do is call Pride Tree Service, and they'll have it quickly out of the way for a great price. But don't wait until the tree falls. It may not fall in the field. It may hit your car, your house, or worse. So call Pride Tree Service today and avoid all those headaches before they happen. Pride Tree Service, 572-2510. That's 572-2510. Veterans are the foundation upon which our freedom is built. Listen to The Source WOCA each Thursday at 9 a.m. to Veterans News with Hank Whittier from Vets Helping Vets. You'll hear tributes, information on veterans' issues, and stories that will make you laugh, cry, and feel proud. Veterans News always focuses on the military, past and present, and on our first responders. Veterans News is brought to you each week by Bob Wines Camellia Gardens and Nursery, keeping you blooming since 1952. Cookies, 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 cookies. We go cookie eating cookies. When you want something special and fun for any occasion, get cookies. King Cookie in the Paddock Mall in Ocala will make a delicious, fun-filled delight just for you. So next time you're in the mall, stop by King Cookie or call 352-237-2557. KingCookieOcala.com. Customized cookies, cakes, and more. King Cookie. Eating cookies, eating cookies. We're so happy eating cookies. Got a garden and we've got a show for you called you've got a garden with your host master gardener carol ann baldwin carol ann answers your questions about your flowers your veggies your grass your trees even questions about your bugs and she's only on woca so don't miss carol ann baldwin and you've got a garden each tuesday from 9 a.m to 10 a.m right here on woca the source When it really counts, depend on the source for the latest weather updates, keeping you ahead of the storm. 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. <laughs> 23 minutes after 11 o'clock. I couldn't hear what you're saying. I'm sorry. All right, all right, 23 minutes after 11 o'clock. I was just looking for Battlefield Earth on Amazon. I wanted to play a little sample of it. Sometimes you can do this. I, I mm-hmm. think I found the wrong one. I think I found the movie with uh, oh, John Travolta. Go to battlefieldearth.com. Oh, okay, okay. And that'll be, that's how I get it? You I think so, yeah. I think you can get the whole thing right there. You can order the book, and you can also get the audio book. And I think they, they you can play a snippet of uh, from the audio book. Oh, okay, let's see. Let's see if this is it. Hold on. Let's okay. I, is this it? I just pushed the button. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. Can you hear that? I can. Oh, my God. <laughs> can you hear that? Listen. Oh my gosh. Wow, what a. It's a movie for the mind. It is a movie for the mind. I'm waiting for some talking to start. 
A Saga of the Year 3000. Oh, man. There's a cutie on the cover, too. There's a cutie on the cover, oh, Jim. She's more than cute. She's uh, hot. I, 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 think that's the, I think that's the heroin, Chrissy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm addicted and, to heroin. I'm addicted to heroin, then. If, if that's right. <laughs> and uh, the hero is, uh, oh, wait a minute, what is it? Johnny Good Boy Tyler. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he won't be hitting on her, then, if he's a good boy. <laughs> oh, he's the good boy, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm addicted to heroin, anyway. Um, uh, do you think... Uh, 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 that uh, SpaceX to be a private company is a better idea than having NASA, a government-funded company, do explorations. <laughs> well, well, look, look what happened to the the train service in this country after it became Amtrak. You know, you, you got railroads that are owned by private companies that really don't even want to carry as they make more money hauling freight, and then it's run by the government, okay? So, oh, okay. You know, so, yes, I think that I think private space endeavors uh, are the wave of the future, and I think that's who we should look. But, uh, you know, just think here just recently, the Falcon 9 blew up, you know, uh, after takeoff. Uh, and uh, what's interesting is Elon Musk, uh, the uh, head of uh, SpaceX, uh, said they were not, you know, they, there were a lot of people who said, they thought they saw an object strike it as it went up, and uh, and Elon Musk said he's not ruling out anything, including uh, some kind of outside influence. And then that leads back to some stuff I studied when when I was preparing my book, Alien Agenda, which is a the uh, top selling uh, nonfiction book on UFOs in the world. Uh, it's been translated in about a dozen languages. Uh, and in there, what I found out was there's been there's been a a lot of uh, a lot of strange things going on, and and when they launch something like a communication satellite or whatever, it seems to just kind of you know it goes up, goes in orbit, everything's okay. But if there's something that's maybe military or something that they say this is a classified mission or who knows what, yeah. perhaps perhaps they're trying to put weapons in space. Those seem to have accidents. They seem to just kind of disappear or they blow up. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know, I, it, uh, that that leads some people to suspect we may be quarantined here, okay? Uh, somewhere, somebody, somewhere somebody says, okay, you want to play around with atomic weapons and you want to fight with each other and kill each other, you know, okay, that's fine, but you're not bringing it out here into the universe. And there's also the possibility that there really is a God, and he's just, he, <laughs> yeah. and maybe he doesn't want to, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. All right, he just, he just says, no, no, you know. No, no, don't I, do it. Yeah. I, 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 I think, you know, the, the, the UFO thing, it, well, of course, it goes all the way back through history, but it really got going uh, in the late 40s, you know, with Roswell and, and then the flyover uh, uh, Washington, D.C. in the early 50s and all like that. And I've always suspected that what, that, that what caused that is when we set off the first atomic bomb in 1945, and then we set off a whole slew of other atomic weapons till we finally got smart and said, no, let's not do that. And I'm thinking somewhere out in the universe, somebody said, oh, my God, the kids found the matches. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, w I just went to your website. I'm going to be on your website a little bit later on to uh, check some of this stuff out. You've got a lot of interesting stuff on your site. Uh, for those who want to look up Jim's site, it's jimmars.com. Two R's in Mars, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, oh, my gosh, the John Kennedy thing looks interesting, too. So, so um, uh, did you happen to see a news article? I think it was this morning about scientists are saying they're finding more and more two-headed sharks. Yes. Well, well, I'm assuming that's in the Pacific, right? <laughs> I don't know. No, they, they. I don't know where it is. No, they said it was around the uh, around the world. Around the world. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, my point being that uh, you know Fukushima is not over with. It's still spewing radiation into the Pacific. Well, that's what I was connecting it to. Was maybe there was some something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that could account for that too. Of course, uh, we do have climate change going on. There's stuff uh, happening all over. But by the way, let me point out that uh, I'm sorry, Al Gore. It's not our SUVs, okay? Uh, because. <laughs> 
because the fact is that the polar caps on Mars are melting. They're getting smaller, so they're melting. And so uh, ice on some of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, they're, they're, it's melting. The outer planets are becoming more luminescent. You, they're brighter. You can see them more. This means that uh, whatever this climate change is, whatever's happening, uh, it's a, affecting the entire solar system. It's not just... I hadn't uh, heard that before. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. See, you need to know that because, you know, there's a lot of uh, politicians and snake oil salesmen. Yeah. Who, wow. I never heard that before. Tried to, tried to Jim, global warming, you know. Jim Mars, thank you so much. We are up against the clock. I wasn't paying attention, but we got 10 seconds. Thank you for being on the air with us today. Go to JimMars.com, two R's, and go to um, uh, BattlefieldEarth.com. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, guys. Have great. a good day. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. After months of saying harsh things about each other, President Obama and Donald Trump holding their first face-to-face since the election this morning. The much-anticipated Oval Office meeting between the president and the man who will succeed him is aimed at ensuring a peaceful transition. And I'm looking forward to doing everything that I can to make sure that the next president is successful in that. The president, in remarks in the Rose Garden yesterday, 